here we go okay right thank you everybody um who's here we got who was first we got ko jerry and iqbal and reza and yanis accidental fire we got gary we got glenda and loads of people here wonderful okay uh eileen says yes can see great okay thank you guys all right we're good we're good we're back okay so um let's see what we're doing today writing titles building a brand and starting a trend so last week's um what would you call that thing feedback form here it is and uh, the responses were kind of split as you can see here between a few different different options um so the most popular one was using i don't know how well you can see that let me make this a bit bigger was writing the title and bullets so that's what we're going to do first and then i'm going to go into some other bits about building a brand and starting a trend assuming we have time and of course i want to leave plenty of time for questions so i'll be stopping intermittently to answer your questions as we go so um Writing titles, building a brand, starting a trend. Let's see what we got here. So, of course, if you're just joining us, please do like and subscribe if you haven't already. That just means that you are a good, wholesome person. Um, after you've done that, um, if you haven't yet signed up at michaelessig.com forward slash live, as you can see below, right down there, you can get some free goodies there, including the slides from today and some other downloads and useful bits and pieces from previous live streams. So go ahead and grab those if you haven't already at michaelessig.com forward slash live. Ask questions, please, as we go, just uh, far away, I will stop intermittently and take your questions. Um, always want to answer as many questions as we can. And I think we tended to get through all of the questions um, in the recent lives. So yeah, just uh, just go ahead and ask. They don't have to be necessarily about what I'm talking about. Could be anything uh, you think I might be able to help you with, or you just want my opinion on. I'm happy to answer any questions as they come. Um, yes, end of today's um, presentation. I will be telling you how you could get a free copy of this book, a little book of T-shirt ideas. Going to give one away at the end today, so stay tuned to find out how you can win one of those if you haven't got one already. All right, shall we get into it? I don't see any questions just yet. We've got Heather. We've got Patty from Chicago. Scott says he can see me. we got Mantis. Melinda. Nice to see you too. Janelle and Adinul Hakim. Thank you, Adonal. Okay, so should we get rolling this morning? Unless anyone has anything else to say, uh, let's go. So first off, I'm going to talk about writing titles and tags because that's something that uh, most, well, not most of you, but a significant portion of you voted for last week. So uh, we did cover this in quite a bit of detail in a previous live stream. That previous live stream is called Keywords 101. You can find it on my YouTube channel. You can go back there and get it. There's some slides you can download as well. So there's a lot of um, lot of info in that session. But one thing I did think that um, might be helpful for us to cover here uh, would be for me to actually write a title and tags and stuff live. I think that's maybe kind of what, what people were asking for. And also just a tip that I've, I've come across recently, which has helped me to think about how to come up with tags and those kind of things. So let me get into this. Um, right now uh sorry yeah so we're going to do writing titles first then i'll talk about building a brand then i'll talk about starting a trend assuming we have time um in this session so writing titles so the, this uh this tip that's really helped me is um something called the tsc formula tsc and this is really a, a formula and a, a framework just to kind of help you to keep your 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 keywords and your tags focused so that you give yourself the greatest possible chance of ranking and of your designs being seen on Amazon or Redbubble or wherever and ranking on Google and all these different places. So the TSC formula um, really, it, or I, I should just say in my email yesterday, I think I wrote a little bit about this and I wrote about the fact that if you if you use too many tags and especially if you use 
irrelevant tags or you use uh, lots of broad terms that are not necessarily about your design, then there's an increased chance that you actually confuse um, search engines, you confuse Google, you confuse Amazon, you confuse Redbubble, and Amazon and Google and Redbubble don't know where to place your design because they're getting all these mixed signals from your tags. For example, if you say this is design is, or in your tags you have a birthday, or you say Christmas, and you say Halloween, and you say Bar Mitzvah, and you say Fourth of July, then Amazon or Redbubble or whoever is like, what's this design about? We don't know. And therefore, they're probably not going to end up ranking it very highly because they don't think it's relevant for any particular single term. So that's where this TSC formula comes in. This is just a way for you to help kind of keep your keywords and tags focused so that you are relevant and that um, search engines and stuff understand what your design is about. Because remember, um, search engines and Redbubble and Amazon, they can't scan your design. They can't look at it and go, oh, this design is obviously for children or this design is obviously about Halloween. They rely on you telling them what your design is about. So they need you to tell them, yes, it's a Halloween design. It's spooky. It's scary. It's for adult or whatever it is. You know, they need, you need to give them that information. So here's the TSC formula that I think might help you. So TSC stands for target, synonym, and category. And uh, credit for this goes to uh, backlinko.com. Um, this is a guy who writes about SEO and subjects around that. And it, particularly, this is a, a formula, I guess, for I think it was for his his session on ranking YouTube videos. But I, th I think it's really relevant. So the idea is that you start with your target keywords. That would be your main keywords that you want to hit, the things that are exactly most relevant to your design. So if your design was a certain phrase, then that would be your target, most likely. Um, you could also treat your target as the ex the kind of T-public, um, what's, what what's the word they use, like key uh, tag or whatever, the one tag that someone would search for to find this design. So I'll show you in a second kind of what I mean by that. Synonym, if you're not familiar with the word, means words that are the same, have the same meaning. So if you're going for um, ghost, then a synonym might be ghoul or ghoulie or, go or uh, spirit or something like that. So those would be synonyms. And category would be the kind of highest up level of tags that you go for. So if we're doing Halloween designs, then your category would be Halloween or maybe Halloween party or trick or treat and things like that. So the idea with the formula is you kind of keep everything relevant and you you simply use these as frameworks through which to run your design so that you're not creating loads of random design uh, loads of random tags or keywords that are not related to to your design Sorry, guys, I think you may have lost me there for a second. Um, I think I'm back. Um, the example I'm going to use is this one right here, which is a design I just created for this blog post on TeePublic. Um, the design is called I Scare with Flair, and it's a cute little ghost with sunglasses and a bow tie. And I think it could be Halloween pun design. So the idea here is um, we're going to use this as our kind of basis. Um, so keep that in mind. In fact, maybe we could drag it over. No, I think we'll leave it there. So here's kind of me illustrating some um, examples for what would be good relevant keywords for this, this design. So the design is I scare with flair. We've got things like Halloween, ghosts, ghouls. Um, down here we've got like uh, kids Halloween or trick or treat and puns. So these are all relevant kind of terms. And if you're Googling, if you're looking at these tags, then you would be able to kind of piece together what the design is about. You'd be like, okay, it's a Halloween design. Okay, it's uh, got ghosts in it. It's a kind of funny Halloween design. It's, you know, somehow got some kind of pun there or something. Um, so that's kind of the idea that we're trying to go for. We're trying to give Google or Redbubble or Amazon lots of relevant terms around the design so that they know exactly where to place it. So for example, with this one, we probably wouldn't want to use the word birthday because it doesn't have anything relevant, you know, to say about birthdays. It's not a birthday design and we would just be wasting space and could be confusing Google by using that. Similar, monsters doesn't really have anything to do with monsters, this design. It's about ghosts and it's about Halloween, um, but it's not, you know, 
It doesn't have a monster in it. It's not really relevant for someone who would be searching for monsters or something like that. So those are, that's kind of how I'm thinking about this. So let me pull up um, this uh, worksheet that I've just uh, put together. And I'll zoom into this. So I think I'm back. Heather says you've gone again. Melinda says you're back. I trust that I'm back now. Please let me know if not. For some reason, the internet just dropped out. Having technical gremlins are plenty today. So for this design, let me copy it and paste it over here so we can look at it while we're, while we're working. I scare with flair. So when I'm writing tags and keywords and stuff for, um, for my designs, uh, I, I find it helpful often to just write out to begin with a load of terms that are around the design, just a load of, you know, just kind of throw everything out there. Uh, but if you're using the TSC formula, it kind of forces you to be a bit more specific and kind of keep things more on target. So for a design like this, um, I think we can probably zoom in a touch more. For a design like this, here's kind of what I'd go with. So target, that's going to be our kind of main um, target keyword. So the main thing we want this to rank for. So obviously, I would go with the phrase would be my first one for a design like this because the phrase is is really the the thing that makes the design what it is. You know, it's the thing that hopefully people are um, – not people are not necessarily going to be searching for this, but if they did search for this, we obviously want to make sure we rank for that because we are that exactly what they're looking for. So I scare with flair would be one target. And then I'd probably go for something like um something like uh funny ghost Halloween. If I could spell properly, funny ghost Halloween. Um, something like that, maybe even cute ghost or something like that, or even cool ghost. So typically target, uh, four target kind of phrases or key key terms is a bit much. You might maybe want to keep it down to three, um, but those would be my target, target ones. So those are things we want to make sure we say in our tags, in our description, and in our title, ideally. So synonyms, um, here we could go with things like... Uh, so we got ghoul, uh, ghouls, uh, ghosts. So we've we've said ghost. We might want to say ghosts as well because that's a plural that is relevant to our to our design. Um, synonyms. So other meanings for what we've got. So like trick or treat would be a synonym for Halloween. So I'm just looking at what I've written here already, and I'm just going to go back and include those. Um, so yeah, things like that. That's hopefully that kind of makes sense. Um, and then a category terms would be things like, I mean, we've already said Halloween, but we could maybe broaden that out a little bit with um, Halloween party or something, or um, even Halloween gift could work for a design like this. Um, what else? Categories. I don't know. We could say, so, I mean, like ghosts and stuff, if people are searching for ghost designs or things like that, or even like Halloween puns or Halloween sayings. Those would kind of be the things I'd, I'd be targeting for something like that. Or ghost could even go with like ghost sayings or something like that. So hopefully that makes sense. So we've got some tags, we've got some synonyms, we've got some categories to go at. And then I would move down and start actually writing an example. So for this design, this is the design we're doing. If you're just joining us, I scare with flair and I'm just writing the titles and the keywords and stuff for this design. So for my title, I think I'm going to go with something like I scare with flair. And then I would write a uh, cute ghost Halloween pun. Now remember on most platforms, so Redbubble, Amazon, um, T Public, and others, they're going to add t-shirt after this so we don't need to add it so i'm just going to write my title as i would without t-shirt and they're going to put that at the end so what i've got in my title is obviously the target keyword and then most if not all of the words that i wanted from my target so i've got ghost cute i haven't gone with funny or cool i think those are a little bit general i think cute is a bit more specific for this design so i'm going to go go for that one um 
so yeah, I think I'd go with something like that. I mean, you could do variations on that. It could be funny ghost pun. It could be funny Halloween pun. It could be Halloween party pun or something like that. But again, it's up to you. We're As long as we're in the same kind of ballpark area and we're not doing anything crazy like writing 4th of July or birthday or something weird like that, then I think we're okay. Okay, for the description, I would typically, what I would try to do with my description is include all of these words, all of our tags, our synonyms, our categories in sentences that make sense. So typically I would start by repeating my main target keyword. So I'd go with something like, I scare with flair, um, something like funny, cute ghost design. So what I'm doing is really kind of just repeating the target, uh, sorry, the title again. I just find that it's good to make sure we get that or close to it again in our description and to have that at the start of the description because Google and other search um, engines, they often look at the first sentence or the first paragraph to really understand what what this uh, page or this design is about. So I'm going to repeat something like that there, and then I'm going to try and form some some sentences around it. So I maybe say something like, um, let's say this is a cool Halloween pun design for ghost fans. Uh, features a well, we've said cool features a uh, smart ghoul instead of ghost this time with sunglasses and bow tie. So here I'm just describing the design. Um, as you can see, so the ghost has got sunglasses and a bow tie. So I'm just saying uh, with sunglasses and bow tie. You'd be surprised what people search for and how specific sometimes people are with what they're searching. So if you can describe everything that's in the design and use things like with, because people will search for things like t-shirt with, ghost and sunglasses or something like that, or ghost and sunglasses t-shirt or ghost with sunglasses t-shirt. So if you can just include as many things like that as possible, um, I think you'll, you'll, you know, you're just kind of hitting as many, um, as many possible things you, as you can without it being too, too broad. Um, so sunglasses and bow tie, um, I'd also like to just kind of say something about the phrase or something like, and I scare with flair, funny, oops, flair, funny Halloween saying, something like that. So there we've got Halloween saying as a, as a phrase within our description. So that's good. Um, and maybe just say something general like great spooky uh, artwork for uh kids trick or treat party something like that so we've just hit a lot of our key terms that's really the goal there but we want to say it in a natural you know way that makes sense uh and then in our tags really all we want to do is just kind of repeat a lot of what we've already said so again i'm going to use this the the main target so i scare with flair um we're going to say cute ghost Halloween, of course. It's probably the broadest single word term we want to use. And then we could use some things like Halloween pun or Halloween puns, Halloween sayings. Um, don't be afraid as well to, to use the plural and the singular. So Halloween saying, Halloween pun, ghost pun, ghost puns. Um, let's use some of our plural. So ghouls, ghosts, uh, trick or treat. Um, yeah, cartoon ghost, we could go with a few things like that, but hopefully that gives you an idea of kind of what we're doing. So I'd, I'd like to run through and make sure we could go with Halloween gift as well. Just keep scrolling back up and checking. I'm not missing anything. Halloween party. So hopefully that makes sense. You can see I've not used any keywords or terms that are not really quite closely related to the design. I'm not trying to hit funny kids t-shirts. I'm not trying to hit funny pun t-shirts. I'm not trying to hit funny cartoon t-shirts or anything super broad and crazy like that. Instead, I'm going really kind of niche and, and related to the, to the design in front of me. And I think it does help to actually have your design in front of your eyes while you're doing this because it just helps you go, oh yeah, he's wearing sunglasses. Oh yeah, he's got a bow tie on. Oh, he's kind of cute. Oh, he's kind of cool or whatever. So, um, so yeah. There we go. All right. Let me take some questions here. 
and uh, I will link this this worksheet up if you want to download it later. If you go to michaelessick.com slash live, you'll be able to get a copy of this uh, shortly after the video. Okay, let's see here. Questions, questions, questions. So I came back. Yes, good. Um, Victoria Miller says costume. Um, you could go with costume. I don't really think this design is um, would be best described as a Halloween costume. I think it, you can use Halloween party because it is a design maybe someone would want to wear for a party, but it's not necessarily a costume. However, you could go, you could go with that. Um, you know, personal preference. It's not going to make a big deal. Melinda says, what is the rule on using words more than one time? Better to keep it short, simple, and accurate, or is more better? So in general, Melinda, I'd say it's better to keep it short, simple, and accurate. Um, but I would not be afraid of repeating some of your key terms. So I wouldn't be afraid of repeating Halloween in here or ghost, because those are our key kind of main terms of what this design is about. Um, and as you kind of see what I've done, especially in the tags, I've not been afraid to repeat Halloween in specific phrases. So Halloween puns, Halloween sayings, Halloween saying, um, you know, I've, I've used it a few times. Now I wouldn't go much further than this. I wouldn't, you know, I don't know how many puns, uh, how many puns, how many tags I've got here. Maybe it's somewhere between 15 and 20. I wouldn't go, you know, overboard. I wouldn't be, go looking for every kind of Halloween variation I could add, but five or six uses, I would say that's reasonable. You know, what I've done here is pretty reasonable. It's not overblown. It's not um, keyword stuffing or anything like that. And I'd be, you know, I think it'd be cool for that. Um, Amanda says this froze on YouTube. Will the video be up later? Um, it should. I, don't, I think I, my internet dropped, so I cut out for a bit. So obviously I wasn't teaching anything then and you won't have missed anything. So, so yeah, the replay will be available. Uh, immediately. Victoria says, should you include target audience like kids? Yes, especially if um, it really is targeted for a particular audience. So I've not really done that in the title here. I think I did say it in my description, I said for kids. So I've kind of given it a little bit of a nudge there. Um, in general, a lot of these sites like TeePublic and, and uh, Merch by Amazon, Redbubble, because they produce their, their designs on different products, including like kids products, they will often include keywords like that in their internal SEO. So you don't have to necessarily worry about saying kids. You, you still have the chance to kind of rank for those built into the, the platform that you're selling on. But if your design is specifically for kids, then I think it can be helpful to use terms like that and even include things like um, not well you can use ages if if your design is about a particular age like for a particular birthday or something like that um but generally um yeah yeah you can you can you can do it but i wouldn't i wouldn't worry too much about it because a lot of the platforms will pick it up um sures says yes as always i uh, don't know what that means um ron a2z man says do you think funny or cute i use too much to help your ranking um so I think what you mean is, are they are they particularly helpful? Are they going to help the ranking? Um, it's a difficult one to for me to answer. Really, I've, I certainly probably the if you went through all my designs, the keyword that I've used the most is probably funny. Um, even though it's such a generic, broad term, what what I think you'll find is people often search for funny something something. So they'll search for like funny Halloween sayings or funny Halloween puns or funny ghost designs, or funny ghost t-shirts. So while funny itself is incredibly broad, once you tag it onto another term, it becomes much more specific. And if you're dealing with a topic or something where there isn't acres of competition, then it can be possible to to rank. And I, th I think funny can help with that. So I wouldn't necessarily, you know, use funny as a, as a standalone kind of thing. But if you're if you're tagging it on, if you're using it, you know, as a, a precursor to something else, then I think it can be worth it. Uh, Mexican Wrestler says, what is better with a tag? Love beer or love beer or even love dash beer? Um, I don't really know how to answer that. Uh, I'm not really sure what you're, what you're targeting there, Mexican Wrestler. Um, I don't know if love if is love beer something that people are going to search for. Are they looking for a design that says love beer on it? Um, I I think you might be better off looking for something like beer lover or something like that. 
Um, but if you're trying to, I, it seems like you might be asking about maybe hashtags or something like that, like trying to rank for a Twitter hashtag. Um, in that case, then you would want to use kind of whatever the hashtag is. So in that case, it would be without any spaces in it. Um, I don't think hyphens are very helpful at all. I would stay away from those. So yeah, I'd go with either the first or your second example there, if that makes sense. Um, Tracy, great example. I always struggle with whether to place the non-searching phrase in the title, especially in the front. I hate to wait that, waste that space on words that I know no one is searching for. Um, I would have put the synonyms in the title and the eye scare with flare in the bullets. Yeah, I mean, it's up to you. This is just kind of the way I do things. I do think a lot of people do that, but I do think, um, you know, if we're trying to de describe this design, um, you know, give the design a title, then I scare with flair is the most appropriate title. I know not many people will search for it, but um, my kind of philosophy, if you like, is putting a lot of designs out there, throwing a lot of stuff at the walls. And some of those, even though no one would have been searching for them before I created them, they have become trends and they have become designs that people search for directly, even though they hadn't, you know, there was no trend for that in the first place. So that's why I always like to keep my my phrase or whatever it is, especially if it's original in the title. Now, of course, there's going to be designs where you don't have text, where there isn't a phrase. And so you're going to have to, you know, use creativity on that. But yeah, um, personal preference. But in my experience, this has worked well for me. Um, you know, I, I'm not afraid to, to use the phrase, the saying in the title, um, because I think it is the best descriptor, the best title for that design. And then I would use what's left of the title to kind of use some supporting supporting terms. Uh, Anne says, is there no need to put the sh put in shirt in the tags or even on the description? Um, it's That's a complicated one, Annie, and it does depend on the platform you're selling on. So, for example, it's not necessary really on, uh, well, even... If, it's not necessary, it's not encouraged, it's discouraged on Amazon and Merch by Amazon to use words like shirt because obviously they're going to put that design on tank tops and uh, pop sockets and stuff. So, or you know, it's up to you, but you can put them on those products. And so if you've got shirt in there, then technically it's, it's mismatching with the, potentially mismatching with the product that people are looking at. So, um, so on certain platforms, yes, on certain platforms, no. Typically and historically, I would always include shirt in there, principally for the sake of Google, because Google may not, you know, depending on the platform, it may not be obvious that this is a T-shirt design. So I would always like to do that for, for Google's sake. Um, but search engines are becoming smarter and Redbubble and TeePublic and most of the platforms are usually including T-shirt and a lot of kind of generic general terms like that in the in the search engine optimization so you don't have to. So I wouldn't worry too much about it these days. Uh, Merch by Paul, what's the font of the ghost design? Um, I don't know off the top of my head, I'm afraid. Sorry, maybe someone can take a stab at it, but I can't remember. Um, Samuel, hi, Michael. Do you use the same description for TeePublic and Redbubble? Isn't that duplicate content for Google? Does this harm us? Um, yes, I do use the same description. No, I don't think it's it counts as duplicate content. Duplicate content is really um, it's more of a thing for like uh, articles, you know, like art for Google to to say, oh, someone's just copied all the content from this website and pasted it on this website. It's not necessarily a problem when it comes to products because if you think about, for example, um, product descriptions for popular products like I don't know an iPhone or something, how many places sell an iPhone? on the internet. You know, Google is not penalizing them because they use the same tech specs or whatever, or the same description that everyone else uses. So no, um, I wouldn't worry about duplicate content um, in that regard. Reza says, uh, using slang words good for titles because in my main language and not English. So I need more time to research this. Um, Reza, it depends on the design. I mean, if your design is using a slang word, then you can use, you would, be best place to use a slang word to describe that design. Um, if your main language is not English, then um, I don't really know uh, what to advise besides, you know, if you're trying to target English speakers, then obviously it helps if you have an understanding of, of English. But really the most important thing is to understand who your audience is 
what terms they will be using to search and then using those terms in your um, titles, descriptions and tags. Uh, Eric says, Michael is right. It's all about SEO, not just about awesome design. Absolutely. We have to get our design seen. Um, it doesn't matter how awesome your design is if it's not seen, all else being equal. That's from Eric Cantona, the king. Um, Andrea, do you use the occasion, i.e. when you think people would wear it? Yes, if it's relevant and if there is an occasion. I wouldn't create an occasion, you know, if there isn't a clear one. But if it's clearly about Halloween or clearly appropriate for Halloween or clearly appropriate for Fourth of July, then fine. But I'm not going to tag that on to a design that's generic and doesn't have, you know, a clear, relevant association with an event or whatever. Okay, Heather says, Merch accepted me. I submitted one design. It got rejected straight away. Not sure why. I included printing for kids' shirts, and it was on the topic of homeschooling. Uh, da, 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 da. Didn't mention so appear, objectionable content. Um, yeah, Heather, without seeing the design, um, it would be very hard for me to, to guess. I mean, you can reach out to Merch. They will often... Um, help clarify things for you. Not always, but you know you can um, reach out to them, and they often will help. Um, but yeah, without seeing the design, it's really hard for for me or anyone to guess what um, why a design was rejected. Uh, da, 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 da. Master your merch. Do you put the focus keywords at the beginning? Yes, absolutely, um, as shown here. Target keywords. You'd always want to use those in your title first line of your description and usually as the first tag as well. Uh, Co Jerry tags, why no broad terms like fun or funny? Um, because they are too broad in most cases and I want to kind of keep things really relevant and specific. So, I mean, I would include like funny Halloween or something like that. I'd, I'd be happy with those in my tags, but I wouldn't, I mean, I have done, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend using just the tag funny. Um, I think that's probably maximum broadness that you ever want to go for. And I'd want to kind of append it with something else. So funny Halloween saying, funny Halloween pun, funny Halloween design, funny ghost design. These are fine, but just funny on its own is maybe a bit too broad. Scott says, is there an amount of words that are optimal? Amazon has a lot of available in the description. Should we use it up or just stay with a set amount of words? Um, typically, Scott, my approach would be to keep it um, as tight as you can, because um, if you think about Google or Amazon's job in this situation, they someone searches for something and they're trying to give them a relevant result. And if you're if you've got a hundred tags, that's a lot of, or if you've got a real a lot of text for it to go through, that's more potential for it to get confused and get confusing. Whereas if you can sum up your design in a few sentences, two or three sentences at most, then that's really giving Amazon or, or Redbubble or whoever exactly what they need. And it's making their life easier, if you like. Um, so I think, yeah, keep it keep it short, simple and sweet and then let them do their job and don't try and overload them with, with too much stuff. Uh, Tracy, do you translate your designs for the German merch submission or leave them in English? Um, I don't uh, translate them to German at the moment. I know some people do and have had some success with that, but um, it's not something I've done. Uh, Patty, is there something you do when you draw a blank? Can't think of any other words. Do you have a go-to tool to help you get going? Um, that's a good question, Patty. Um, yeah, if I if if I've maybe done it, I mean, typically what that shows is that you you haven't got a really good concept or design in the first place, because if you're struggling to describe it or come up with with relevant keywords, it probably means you don't know who the design is for, you don't know what the design's about, and that just shows that you've got a problem with your strategy overall. But um, if you can't think of any other words, or this is probably the the usual way I use this. If you're struggling for synonyms or you just want to check that you're not missing on any low-hanging fruit, then uh, you can go to, for example, Red Bull or Amazon, search for one of your broader terms and just see if there's other terms and things that you've missed. So for example, if you searched Halloween, you might see trick or treat that you might have missed, or you might see candy, or you might see ghosts or ghouls or whatever. It might be just a few synonyms that you've missed. So searching on a t-shirt platform can usually help with that or searching on Google or YouTube and just kind of looking at uh, related keywords can help. 
Uh, Mexican wrestler. I meant what do search engines pick up on format wise? Um, okay, answer made sense. Thank you. Good. <laughs> um, Patty says, knowing that's how some people search, do you can you use hashtags in your tags? Um, I don't think there's any benefit from using the hash um, character in your in your tags. Um, but if some people are searching and you think people will be searching for that, especially if it's kind of a design around activism or something, um, you know, like Twitter activism or hashtags like that, then, yeah, having having all your words together could be helpful like that. It could help you rank for things like that. Um, but most of my designs, that's not really a relevant consideration. But if it is for yours, then then fine. Yeah, do that. Uh, Stan says, does better understanding on SEO subject help? Uh, yes, Stan, I think it really does. I think it's something that helped me in the early days to get my shirts ranked and to um, kind of win in certain categories because I was I had a lot of um, SEO knowledge coming from a kind of SEO background. And I was able to apply that to my design. So certainly I think it's it's good um, to have that. Um, I would just recommend checking out Backlinko. That's a, a blog, very detailed SEO blog. Um, but if you just search on YouTube and start doing some searches around SEO, then you'll find a lot of great content on there that will help you get a broad understanding, which is really all you need to, to know when it comes to, to this kind of thing. Um, Mexican wrestler says the font looks like Gotham. Thank you for that. Uh, Tracy says, using a dash in a tag, I've heard that using a dash is a good idea. For example, if you use tax-free, you will index for both tax-free and tax-free. Um, yeah, can't verify that, Tracy, but um, could be useful. Um, Andrea says, thank you. No problem, thank you. Ryan says, if the design is going on multiple products, should you add in those tags like tote sticker pillow? No, Ryan, this is kind of goes back to what I was saying before. Most of the platforms will include those. For example, if you look on Redbubble, um, let's just have a quick look. Uh, if you look on Redbubble and you go to any single design, let's see if we can find a design here. Uh, just pick one at complete random. So if you scroll down here, you'll see that um, the, or maybe you won't see, but right down here, Redbubble is saying things. It's taking your tags and it's adding relevant things on. So it's saying Charles Darwin t-shirts, Charles Darwin stickers, Charles Darwin phone cases. So typically that's what, um, that's what Redbubble does. And so you don't need to worry about adding those product things in into your tags because Redbubble or whoever is going to include those. Most platforms are, are smart enough to understand that they need to do that now um, to help stuff rank. Where was I? Was that over there? I was doing my thing, wasn't I? Okay. Um, okay. Justice, when you're writing your listings, to what extent do you imply SEO competition to the choice of your keywords? Uh, very rarely, Justice. If I'm honest, I, I really just write off the top of my head, uh, kind of like you saw me do here. So it's really just kind of a brainstorm activity. I mean, if I can't come up with enough words to describe it, it again, it kind of shows a, a problem in my strategy or in my design. You should, I think, be able to sit down and without much, you know, looking for other resources, be able to describe the design using relevant keywords in such a way that it will be relatively easy to find, um, you know, when people are searching for it. So, yeah, I don't I don't use really tools. I don't really go looking for keywords. I certainly don't go looking for like keyword um, you know, competition or how often people search for things. To me, that's um, that's a lot of extra work. And really what you, my strategy is creating as many designs as I can um, because I'm trying to build up a big portfolio of work, a big portfolio of designs that I can use in the future for lots of things. It's not about, you know, deep research on one particular design. Um, okay, Eileen says, are full stops and semicolons used to break up keywords? Um, don't know how to answer that question. Are full stops to break up keywords? Um, I wouldn't use full stops or semicolons to break up my keywords. I'd want to use the keywords as someone would type it in, if that makes sense. Um, Scott, I've seen shirts with high bars have almost no descriptions and only a couple of words for a title on Amazon. Um, oh, I think you mean high BSRs. Yeah, I mean, that, it goes to show that uh, not everything comes down to, you know, tags and titles and stuff. Um, obviously, 
th- probably the biggest ranking factor on Amazon is how much it's being bought would be the conversion rate, if you like. So if you're there early and if you own a particular category, if you like, if you're the first one with a particular design, then you're going to rack up the sales. It's going to create this kind of circle of, you know, snowball effect that's going to keep your design on top. And therefore, you don't really have to have a great title. You don't have to have detailed descriptions and you'll just kind of own the space. Um, so, yeah, that's that's one aspect to that. Um, sometimes it's the fact that, and this is something I've seen um, certainly work in certain circumstances, is that if you have a, a title that's really short and to the point and doesn't have lots of extra keywords in and you just keep it really succinct, then that can be a benefit because Amazon's like, well, that that design's clearly about that because they've, they've just gone all in on that. They haven't padded it with loads and loads of words. They've just said, this is a Halloween ghost t-shirt or whatever it is. So if sometimes if you just go for exactly what the design is with just the shortest possible title, it can help. So it's something to, to play around with, especially. Uh, Code Jerry says, how about long tail keywords? So yeah, long tail keywords would be things like funny Halloween puns or funny ghost designs or something like that. So those would be long tail keywords that are quite specific, but they aren't necessarily going to have high levels of of searching and traffic and stuff. And also by including things like, you know, ghost with sunglasses, ghost with bow tie and stuff, um, you know, those those would be long tail keywords. You know, any any keyword is potentially a long tail keyword. It depends, you know, all that makes it a long tail keyword is that it's not going to be very high traffic. It's not going to be searched for as is very often. So by including, you know, relatively relevant, but, you know, broad, relevant, but broad, what I mean is by including things like sunglasses, bow tie, cute, cool, ghost, all these things in combination could combine to create, you know, long to long tail traffic for your designs. Um, Eileen says, I meant to say break up long tail keywords at the end of a phrase. Uh, yeah, sorry, Eileen, I'm not really tracking with you on, on that one. Um, <laughs> okay, right. I think I've answered everyone's questions there. So shall we crack on with, I think, um, yeah, so just some key takeaways from the titles thing. Um, so I would say never use irrelevant terms. You don't ever want to use terms that are not related to your design. Perhaps obvious, but you do see people do it and people are tempted to do it um, because they think there's there's more traffic around those terms. I would always say err on the side of specific over traffic. And then, you know, I just think that's a, a more effective way to do things and use broad terms sparingly. So don't use, you know, funny as a standalone term. Don't go for like funny, you know, without um, in, without tagging it onto some other word that's going to help you. Um, you know, that's going to be more specific to your design. And think like Google. So imagine, you know, Google or Amazon or Redbubble or whatever, they're saying, what is this design or what is this page about and who should I show it to? So you need to think like them in order to give them exactly what they want. Is it for kids? Is it for people going to a Halloween party? Is it for hipsters? Is it for goths? Is it for grandmas? Whatever it is, you want to make sure that you give Google relevant information about the design keep it relevant, keep it on point, And then you won't have to worry about, um, you know, uh, confusing Google so that you, you, you know, you're giving yourself the best chance of ranking. Okay. Hope that was helpful. Um, if you want to get the information and the kind of worksheet kind of thing there, make sure you sign up at michaelessic.com forward slash live, and you'll be able to get access to those. I'll be sending them out, um, shortly after this, this live. Iqbal, do you use any software to help you copy your title descriptions quickly to Merch by Amazon Redbubble? Um, No, Iqbal, um, not software, but I have built out um, a Google Sheet that allows me to kind of quickly grab um, and save the title, the description, and the tags very quickly. So in this Google Sheet, I would have a space for tags. All my tags would be there. I'd have a space for description so I can copy and paste. And I've also done things um, previously where I'd have a description kind of um, formula. So it would be like this X shirt is perfect for people who like X, X, and X. You can, you know, great gift for X lovers and X, whatever, things like that. And then the formula would simply drop in various keywords in there. So you could use something like that. Uh, Quite easy to build something like that with Google Sheets, but I haven't used any software um, to help me do that stuff. 
Um, no, actually, Iqbal, sorry, I tell a lie. We have used Merch Wizard to help with um, Merch by Amazon listings. Uh, Merch Wizard will help you save all your designs, but it's also really handy when you want to list designs quickly. So we have used that. Uh, that really speeds up the merch listing process. Um, MerchWizard.app. Uh, recommend that software very highly. Dopey Art Design. What if doing skiing and snowboarding designs, should we add popular ski hills as tags? Um, I think unless your design is about that particular ski hill, I, I assume you're talking about a a location rather than a, a category of ski hill, if that makes sense. Um, but if, unless it's about a specific location, I think it, it's not relevant enough to include in a generic skiing or snowboarding design. Now, of course, if you're doing a design about a particular location, like, um, I don't know what some of these places are called, but, you know, like the Alps, whatever it is, certain mountains, Snowdonia skiing or something like that, then of course you want to use it there. But if it's not, then I wouldn't really, I mean, you could try it out and see if it works for you, but I wouldn't go down that route. I think that's too irrelevant. And I just think that what happens over time is if you use irrelevant terms and if you rank for those terms, so let's say you have a design that's just something generic about skiing, but you've used Snowdonia in your um, tags. Snowdonia is a mountain in Wales. Um, someone searching for Snowdonia, let's say your design comes up, and they're going to scroll past it because it's not what they were looking for. And over time, the platforms like Amazon Redbubble and Google and others, they're going to say, well, that design's not relevant for that. And they're going to drop it down the ranking. So I would just, you know, you want to really just kind of keep it um, as specific as you can. Giorgio, can you combine keywords from two completely different niches? Um, yes, you can, as long as it's relevant to your design. Absolutely. So if your design is is for vegan grandmothers or whatever, then absolutely, technically, those are technically or, you know, those are two different niches, you could say, but you can, of course, include those if it's relevant to the design. What you don't want to do is include irrelevant terms. Uh, Riaho, I know you have tons of designs up. So currently, how much design do you make in a week? Um, right now, and this has been the case for, for months now, I'm not really producing any new designs at all. Um, I am kind of tweaking and improving some old designs, but I'm not really producing a lot of designs at the moment. But in my heyday, um, I was producing 40 to 50 designs a week um, at certain times. And I would recommend uh, a target like that if you want to really make quick progress on, on, the, on these platforms. Um, Iqbal says he will try out Merch Wizard. Absolutely great. Um, and Dopey says location. Yes. Okay, cool. So uh, we've got 10 minutes left, and Mantis has a question. Mantis, what's your opinion on building a personal brand like Vincent Trinidad Arts? How would you approach this similar situation to build a strong following base who will support and buy your art? Mantis, you couldn't have asked your question at a better time because I'm just about to talk about that. So let's quickly dive into building a brand. I don't think we'll have time to go into the trend stuff today, but let's do this one because I've got a couple of thoughts about it. And I can probably bash through it in five minutes and then you can ask some questions. So um, building a brand is a very broad term and can be confusing to people, uh, means a lot of different things to different people. But um, let's just start here with why building a brand um, matters. So I would say my definition of brand would simply mean something, something you own where you have a direct connection with a customer. So whether that's, it could be as simple as an Instagram account where you have direct contact with a potential customers, or it could be a Shopify store where you have, you know, direct contact with customers. The difference between a brand and selling on Redbubble or selling on Merch by Amazon is you aren't building anything when you sell on Redbubble or Merch by Amazon. Yes, you might be making cash, but you will not be having anything that actually kind of generates long-term connection with a customer. And you can't go and contact and communicate with those customers. For example, if you release a new design, Merch by Amazon isn't going to show that new design to people who bought your design previously. So you're not building a brand. So that's what I mean by brand. Um, and if someone buys based on a brand, it's very hard to be undercut. So it's a really good idea to build a brand, especially a brand with weight, because it's very hard for people to come and then steal and drink your milkshake. For example, if you are Kanye West, you know, people cannot sell, you know, <laughs> people cannot sell 
fake Kanye West albums or whatever, if you know what I mean. It's very hard for someone to undercut you, especially if your selling channel is something like an Instagram account or it's organic search based on your name. Um, because you're likely to be the number one search for that. People are likely to know, okay, this is your official site. I'm going to buy from here. And therefore, it's harder to be undercut. Not impossible to be undercut, but it does make it much harder compared to um, selling you know, non-brand-based designs on Merch by Amazon or Redbubble or whatever. If you're selling on these designs and you're selling via organic traffic, then you are within the hands of the platform and Merch by Amazon, Redbubble can kick you off. They can remove your designs. They can change things. They can reduce royalties at any time. So you are really just, um, you're, you're building your house on sand, if you like. You're not really building anything in the first place, apart from perhaps cash flow, but you're, you're not actually in control of where your income and your sales are coming from. And you don't have a real way to market and to increase your sales apart from churning out lots more designs. So that's why building a brand is a, a good and important thing to do. Um, I, you know what? I'm going to skip through these and I'm just going to, because I want to kind of answer Mantis's question. Um, types of brands. So I'm just going to list out some, what I would call types or categories of brands. This is by no means exhaustive, but hopefully this will kind of help you to think um, the way I think about brands and, and maybe what kind of brand you might want to create. And it's not really one single thing. So I think when people think of brands, they maybe think um, just to go back to, whoops, go back to this slide one second. Um, a good brand is not a generic Shopify store selling a random collection of your designs. So if a lot of people seem to think that if they just take their designs that they sell on Redbubble or Amazon or wherever, and they just put them all on a Shopify store and give it a name, then that's creating a brand. I would say that's the opposite. That's not the opposite of a brand, but it's not a brand. And it's certainly not a good brand because all that is is a collection of random designs, especially if these designs are covering various different niches and various different topics, which I do see a lot of. I get people emailing me saying, review my, review my Shopify store and stuff. And it just is a collection of an incredibly, you know, variety of different niches and topics and subjects. And that's not a brand because people can't associate your store or your, your brand, your logo, your name with any single thing. So a good brand should really be something that you can sum up in a sentence, something that you, you know, you're, you're able to kind of describe in a, a simple way and, and explain to people what it is. So here's some examples of brands, and I think these are the type, kind of types of brands. So artist-based, that would be kind of what Mantis was getting at with maybe something about like Vincent Trinidad, who obviously sells on a lot of print-on-demand sites, but is an artist in his own right. People might, or people will buy stuff because it's Vincent's art. Um, another type might be a clothing or fashion-based brand. So this is where it's based on the the product, if you like. So that would be like the hundreds or or Teddy Fresh or something like that, where it's really about the actual the the product itself, less about the design. Um, obviously, it's about the design of the product, but not so much the artwork. And then you've got aesthetic or style-based designs. This would be things where you might say, oh, it's designs around uh, manga or designs around. Um, I don't know, Vaporwave or something like that. Um, subject or topic based. So this might be around hobbies. So maybe around certain breeds of dogs or or maybe around, uh, I don't know, certain um, political associations or something. Those would be kind of subjects and topics. And then you've got something which I couldn't come up with a great title with, but I would call something plus merch. And this is where you have something and really the brand is you or something you've created and you just want to sell merch for it. So let me just quickly run through these. Um, so artist base would be where it's motivated by the artist's style or wanting to support the artist. And this could be branded as an individual in the case of something like Vincent Trinidad, or it could be as a brand. You could have a pseudonym for your, your artist moniker, like Banksy or something like that. Um, and it kind of, you know, it is a brand, but it's also an artist at the same time. So some examples of this that I like, uh, glorpgum.com, um, I think is Brad McGinty is an illustrator, does some, some really nice work. And Jack Teagle. And these are artists where, you know, if I'm going to buy some of their stuff, it's because I like their style. I like the artistic style. And maybe I want to support the artist. So if you want to develop this kind of brand, I think the, the biggest important things to do are to develop your personal style. Um, Glorp Gum, Jack Teagle, these guys have a very identifiable style, as a lot of successful artists do. 
and people buy their stuff because they like that style and because they identify with it and they get something out of it. So if you're going to do that kind of thing, um, really you need to develop a personal style and a unique style that sets you apart. And uh, really you need to just post a lot. You need to put a lot of stuff out there and share a lot of artwork. And that's how you're going to build that kind of interest and following over time. Um, you would also really want to try and hook your particular designs into um, maybe some kind of movement or, or or style or broader style so you can kind of overlap it with something that people might be interested in or searching for um, in the first place, whether that's like a vintage style or something. Um, so, yeah, that's artist-based. Clothing fashion-based, I'll just give you some examples like Teddy Fresh, The Hundreds, or Rip and Drip. Um, this is obviously going to be a harder thing to do. It's not an easy thing to build with print on demand because people are typically looking for high quality products, um, which are more customized and, and uh, something that's harder to do with print on demand. And if you want to do something like this, you really need to tap into more of a fashion based scene. You probably need to have popular friends with lots of followers on Instagram and really do something unique and special. Um, aesthetic and style based. So um, Imori.com, WickedClothes.com, Vapor95. These are things where the, the, the brand is built around a particular style, a visual style usually. So it could be like in the case of Imori, that's like anime clothing. Vapor95 is like Vaporwave, retro clothing and stuff like that. So if you know the scene and if you can leverage organic traffic, um, then you can build a brand around something like this, where the brand is really built around how things look, the aesthetic, the style, and the culture, um, and you can do something like that. Subject topic based, uh, radicaltetail.co.uk, AAF Nation, allriot.com, Philosophers Guild. These are all built around, usually these are political examples for some reason, but something around a topic or subject. And if you are really into a particular topic or subject, then you can build a brand around that. Usually this gives you room to create content around it as well. So blog posts and kind of roundup blog posts or guides or videos or whatever to really increase your reach. Um, but those are some examples you can check out later of good subject-based brands. And finally, something plus merch, which I think is overlooked by a lot of artists, which is really um, creating a brand around, um, around something you've created. So it could be like a podcast, a YouTube channel, a blog, a webcomic. Especially for artists, I think like the webcomic angle is kind of underappreciated, underrated. Um, and some examples here, of course, people like PewDiePie, XKCD, which is a webcomic, um, HTH3 podcast, Zen Pencils, kind of Zen Pencils is a good example of um, something that's kind of half webcomic, half kind of uh, poster brand, where he's built a kind of topic around um, inspirational kind of comics that really work great as posters and he's be ab been able to create a brand around that. Um, we Rate Dogs is a Twitter account that then kind of grew into a brand as well. And really what we're talking about here is merch for whatever the thing is you've created. And I think that's a an overlooked opportunity, especially for designers and artists who could create something, um, you know, really, truly unique, um, but not necessarily around them as an artist, but more, you know, what they're creating. So a webcomic or a, I don't know, it could be a podcast or, a, you know, series of YouTube videos or whatever. Um, really the tip here is to just do your thing and, and, and let it roll. So, um, I think I'll leave it there because there's a lot more to get through and we are running out of time. Um, do go to michaelessick.com forward slash live and you'll get the slides with all this information. Um, yeah, I will just finish by saying on the brand building front, Etsy is a great place to start because Etsy gives you organic traffic, but also allows you to kind of build a brand while you're on there. So you can create a bit more of a connection with with people you can have followers you can have um you know likes you can have something where you can offer them something you can kind of drive them back to a website sign up to my email list stuff like that so etsy is a good place to start a kind of halfway house and then later obviously you could move it to something like shopify or a platform like that where you'll have much more control over your over your brand and over your ability to communicate directly with people Okay, I will take a drink and then I'll answer some of these questions. So um, just to answer, to double back on Mantis's question, <clears throat> excuse me, um, 
building a personal brand like Vincent Trinidad Art, um, how would you approach this to build a strong following base? So really, I think, unfortunately, the bad news is it does take a long time and it involves posting a lot of stuff. If I go back here, a couple of slides. Um, I think you really have to create a lot of stuff, as I say here, and do it consistently and expect probably it's going to take something like two years before you really begin to see some some things taking off there. So I know Vincent, I think he's produced thousands of pieces of artwork. I don't know how, how many Twitter posts or Instagram posts he's done in that time as well. But in order to develop a following, you really do just have to like post and post and post. And you really have to just do it consistently for a long time. And that's the bad news. The good news is that once you've done that and you've created a brand, you really have something that is difficult for people to take away from you. So once you've got it, once you've got a following, once you're in someone's head, it's very hard for for anyone to push you out of there unless you just, you know, you stop for some reason or whatever. But yeah, I think th these kind of steps here, here, Mantis, that you see on screen, this is what I would recommend for building something like Vincent has done. So it's creating a lot of work, being really good at it, doing it consistently and then putting in the hard work for a couple of years before you expect anything to really pick up and take off. Okay. Scott says when scaling, how much should you change up the words in the title and description, i.e. in a series for various workers or family members? Um, uh, I think Scott that you can, you can really just uh, do the boilerplate kind of thing and just switch out the most important words. I don't think that's, that's necessarily a problem as long as, Everything else is kind of generic. Um, you know, I don't I don't think you're you're likely to run into like duplicate content issues or anything like that. I think that's kind of what you're circling around. And um, yeah, I don't think duplicate content is necessarily a worry for stuff like that. Um, B and A, Michael, have you ever sold directly from Facebook? And what are your thoughts about doing that? In other words, not having an additional platform or website, just a Facebook store. Um B and A, I don't think I I haven't sold directly on Facebook yet. Um, I know that Facebook shops has now taken on a new kind of turn and that's interesting. I haven't played around with it yet myself, but I, I think it could be a, a, an interesting option. I think that my concern at the moment is I don't think Facebook yet, I cert well, I I'm pretty sure they don't yet have any kind of marketplace approach. So yes, you can sell on Facebook, but what they really mean is you can sell via your Facebook page, which means people can go to your Facebook page, can see your products, can buy your products from there. What it does not mean is that people can go on Facebook, search for funny Halloween shirts, and you can rank and people can find you there. Um, so I think that until really Facebook develop something like that. I don't know if they if they are working on it. I hope they are. Um, but if they, you know, until they do something like that, then Facebook is really Facebook shops are really just another platform to sell on. It's not that different in that case from selling on Shopify or selling on Etsy or well, it it's selling on Etsy would be better because you have some organic reach. Um, but it's not much different from selling on Shopify or your own WooCommerce store or something. So I think it's yeah, I, I'm, I'm, you know, until I think there's there's an obvious kind of organic angle to it, I'm not sure that it's going to be that massive. Um, where it could be interesting is the Instagram connection because the Instagram stores are now becoming a thing. And I think if you can sell directly on Instagram, that could be interesting because I have had good success in the past driving traffic from Instagram to my Shopify store and having people buy from there. So if you could reduce that down from having them go from Instagram to Shopify where they're just staying on Instagram and buying on there, then I think that could work. But again, we are talking about not organic um, sales, but sales coming from your own marketing, uh, influencer marketing or sponsored um, Instagram posts and stuff like that. Okay. Accidental fire says 40 a week. Yikes. That's a full-time job. I hit 20 a few times and couldn't imagine doubling it. Yeah. I, I should say that in that time I was doing, uh, if I was doing 40 a week, I wasn't doing all the designing myself. I was um, using my designers and giving them designs to do. And then I was maybe tweaking things after that. But yeah, I, it, it, it's certainly a big ask if you're trying to do those yourself. But if you're hiring and working with other designers, then it is doable. Um, 
Ryo, I'm thinking of opening a POD company in my country. Any advice? Um, if you mean POD company as in you're going to do the printing for, for other people, um, I don't really have any advice because I'm not a, a POD company. I've never run a POD company. Um, I would say, though, that you just want to make sure you have deep pockets because there's there's a lot of competition in the space. And uh, you want to create really good quality stuff and you want to get it out as fast as you can. And you're going to need to have a real uh, marketing plan to actually get your POD company out there in front of people. So what's your unique proposition, um, you know, versus Printful and all the other POD companies, if that makes sense. Uh, Balaz, great content, Michael. Question, would you recommend selling POD shirts, hoodies, etc., on Amazon with, let's say, Printful besides Merch by Amazon? Um, yes, you can do that, Balaz. Um, I've done that in the past. However, I've run into problems where people would, you know, once a design got popular, it would then be able to be not just copied, but actually people could take your product listing and sell it um, for cheaper so they could take the buy box off you. Um, I think there's ways to kind of protect around that a little more these days, um, but I haven't dipped my toe in that for a few years. So so yes, I think it can be uh, very profitable. It can be worthwhile, but it is a a bit more work and a bit more investment, and it that it is fraught with potential dangers. And I think you probably need to look into things like getting a trademark registered so that you have some kind of protection, and kind of looking into that stuff so people can't take the buy box from you on Amazon if your design does get pretty popular. The other thing is that using Printful and stuff, it is pretty hard to compete against. Um, some sellers on there uh, who are screen printing stuff and so can offer designs for, or offer shirts for much cheaper. Whereas if you're selling with Printful and, and these guys, it, it's hard to compete with screen printed prices. So yes, the, there's a use case and yes, it can be very successful, but there's a couple of, you know, kind of obstacles you need to overcome. Uh, Stanley says, how much posting is too much posting in the course of a day? Um, if we're talking about kind of building a brand and Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and all these kind of things, uh, I don't really think there is a thing as too much posting. I think um, the people who sit, tend to do the most are those who post the most. And uh, yeah, don't think there is such a thing, Stanley. Okay, I think that I've answered everyone's questions so far. So, um, I will say that on this slide, there's a whole nother section all about starting a trend, um, which we'll have to maybe cover either next week or some other time. But you can download the slides if you go to mycollectic.com forward slash live. You can find the um, slides there, or they will be there shortly. And uh, yeah, you can kind of read about that and look up some of the examples. I would recommend just going back to brand building briefly um that you look into all the examples i've given here so go and download the slides and everywhere that i've given some examples whether that's uh xkcd zen pencils we rate dogs uh all riot.com radical tea towel i think these are really good things for you to look at to kind of see how people have built brands around different things whether it's a topic or a subject or around a fashion trend or whatever these are good examples of of uh, people who've done that. And I think it will help you kind of broaden your approach and thinking instead of just thinking of a brand as I'm going to take my designs and whack them on Shopify. If you can think about how you're going to serve a community and a, and a niche and a tribe of people and really do something, you know, unique and, and quality and stuff, then you can really build a brand, you know, that, that works for the long term. And a lot of these guys are good examples that I would recommend you go and look into. Okay. Uh, right. I think I've answered everyone's questions there. We did Stanley. Yep. Cool. Okay. So I think we'll wrap it up there for today. Now I did say I was going to give away one of these bad boys, a little book of t-shirt ideas. This is my book all about, it's got 14 different t-shirt templates with several different examples, illustrations for each one and lots of ideas in there. You can pick it up via my website, michaelessig.com. But if you want to win this one, I'm going to give it away uh, to a lucky winner. And this is how you can win it. Um, at the end of this video live stream, when this finishes, 
what I want you to do is go. <laughs> sure says just in to win the book. Count me in. Okay, well, this is how you can do it, Shuz. Um, when this live stream ends, so not until this live stream ends, but once it ends, once it's over and done, I want you to go to the YouTube uh, page for this video. And I want you to comment, not in the live stream comments, so when the live is over, but underneath the video, tell me what you got out of this video session today. Tell me your biggest takeaway, what you what you got out of this, and I will pick one lucky winner to win this book. I will sign it and send it to you with some other good stuff as well. So that's how you're going to win this. As soon as the live stream is over, go over to the YouTube page for this video, comment beneath, and you can win it. And I'll whisk it off to you from me straight to you. Gary says, great stuff today. Thanks, Michael. Thank you, Gary. BNA says, the summary introductions on brand branding and brand building were really helpful. Thank you. Thank you, BNA. Great. Kathleen says, thanks. Scott says, you can give it to me if you want. Well, you have to go and write comments, Scott, but you could win it. Uh, Co says, win it. Absolutely. That's what you can do. <laughs> uh, Dina Van Dam says, thanks, Michael. All right. Great. Thank you, guys. So thank you for joining me today. Head over to the comments section to comment and you could win this. Could be landing on your doorstep very soon. Um, I will be sending out email with the slides and stuff tomorrow. Uh, you can access those at michaelessick.com forward slash live. And I will let you know what we're going to do next week. I uh, hope you'll be able to join me next week, same time next week when we'll do something else. What will it be? Don't know. Um, but hope you can join me then. Okay. Um, Heather says thanks. Eileen says thanks. Samuel says thanks. No problem. Thank you, Patty. Thank you. Stan says great book. Thank you, Stan. Uh, Ron says thanks again. Lisa says thank you. Andrea says thank you. And Scott says thank you. Uh, Scotty Gadu says glad I caught alive. Excellent. Well, thank you, guys. I'm going to wrap it up there. Uh, appreciate you joining me today. and hope I'll see you all next week. Uh, talk to you soon. All right. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.